Hey YouTubers, this is Lonnie Clark again, Nuts for Art, and I'm going to read more of our book, Poison Power, by Dr. John Goffman and Dr. Arthur Tamplin. I want to thank them, uh, posthumously I guess, because they're dead, for writing this book, because it has information put in a way that we can understand. So we are on Chapter 4, under uh, the title is Any Radiation Safe? And... Uh, this is interesting. I have new glasses the first time in my life where I can just use one pair of glasses to read. So it's kind of very fascinating. I uh, usually have to wear my contacts and then a pair of glasses to read unless I like pull the book four inches away from my eyes. So here, I wanted to reread this sentence though because this is really important. Listen to this. Recent HEW Assistant Secretary Roger Egeberg stated in, in congressional hearings on August 5th, 1970, quote, the FRC position at the present time can briefly be summarized as follows. One, we continue to advocate, advocate the basic premise that the FRC guides must not be construed as an allowed dose, which could result in every person in the United States eventually being exposed up to the allowed level. Do you get what he's saying there? They don't condone it. This remarkable statement of the FRC position would be ludicrous if it didn't deal with such a deadly serious threat to the future health of the entire U.S. population. Hello, St. Louis. Hello, Portland. Hello, Seattle. Hello, all of Utah and Idaho. For goodness sakes, Colorado. A reasonable question suggests itself. If you want the exposure, if you want the exposure to be kept at a low level, why not set the allowable level dose there? <clears throat> the Federal Radiation Council, which they refer to as the FRC, the Federal Radiation Council antics do, in many respects, compete with those of the Atomic Energy Commission, exactly right, and the IAEA, Inter uh, International. Atomic Energy Commission, IAEA agency, is represented. Okay, so I'm going to, I digress, I apologize. The Federal Radiation Council antics do, in many respects, compete with those of the Atomic Energy Commission, possibly because the AEC is represented on the Federal Radiation Council. For example, the Federal Radiation Council has stated it is inadvisable to accept any amount of radiation without good reason. But where did the FRC e ever present any good reasons for allowing 0.17 rads as the average U.S. Ex population exposure? Considering the magnitude of the cancer, leukemia, and genetic fatalities to be expected from such, quote, guideline, unquote, allowable exposure, an incensed public should very well demand from the Federal Radi Radiation Council explicit good reasons for allowing 0.17 rads per year. The more farcical antic is displayed in even some recent testimony of Dr. Paul Tompkins, Executive Director of the Federal Radiation Council. Testimony published in the record, pub, testimony published in the record on the hearings of the Joint Committee on Atomic Energy. Quote from the exchange between Dr. Paul Tompkins of the FRC, the Federal Radiation Council, and Senator Pascatori from the Joint Committee on Atomic Energy. Dr. Tompkins, no sir, it is, exceedingly di it is an exceedingly difficult problem because when dealing with radiation hazards and accepting the no thresholds, the classic approach of setting a quote safe level unquote is denied to us. Huh. Consequently, we have to look at the magnitude of the risk on one side and the operational requirements, the desirability of the activities, and so forth on the other, which means there has to be a consensus among many conflicting viewpoints, and getting such a consensus is often very difficult, meaning 
Depends on how much life we want to kill. Is it worth making a profit killing people? Puh, guess so. And the entire planet. Chairman Pastore, may I ask you a question on that point? Reverting back to your statement on page two. Does the Federal Radiation Council concern itself with the economic aspects of this problem? Does that make a difference to you as to the health measures that are to be recommended? Dr. Tompkins, it depends on how you define economics. And additionally, Senator Pastore, I agree with that statement, of course, but I was wondering within the province and the purview and the functions of the Federal Radiation Council, what are the guidelines that you take into account in reaching a decision? Dr. Tompkins, Primarily, the health consideration is, of course, the overriding factor. Chairman Pastore, there, you, there again, you are leaving room for something else. Why shouldn't it be the only factor from your point of view? Doc, Dr. Tompkin, well, if one can provide a statement as to how much individual risk might be acceptable for certain activities, then I think that would be the only consideration needed. And separately, from a statement of Dr. Tompkins in those hearings on page 34, quote, the primary objective of the FRC is to make recommendations which represent a reasonable balance between biological risk and the impact on uranium mining, i.e. economic gain. So we're uranium mining to create nuclear energy for money. It's like we're digging it up because it's an economic thing to stimulate the economy, but it's poisoning the earth. But we keep doing it because it's making money. And the, that's their job is to balance the difference. And they've decided to, like, fuck the environment. Excuse my language. Wow. We are on 108. First paragraph. What operational requirement of any aspect of the nuclear energy program is more important than the health and safety of the people of the United States? Precisely who decides upon operational requirements for nuclear electric power production that might sacrifice thousands or tens of thousands of additional human lives to disease annually, more like millions now? The FRC always has, an, has expressed its grave concern about, quote, operational, unquote, requirements, meaning convenience of governmental or industrial atomic polluters. The FRC has always expressed its grave concern about the cost in dollars of protecting humans from senseless radiation. We have yet to see the FRC express grave concern about the extra degenerative and genetic diseases from its own guideline radiation doses. One further group of totally irresponsible statements emanating from nuclear power proponents deserves careful study here. These statements, yes, these statements are not only misleading, but they can be construed in only two ways. Either those who are making the statements don't understand what they are saying, or they deliberately intend to deceive the public. Recently, Dr. Theos Thompson, one of the five U.S. Atomic Energy Commissioners, said, quote, Obviously, there, this is a very small amount of radiation compared with the levels which mankind has been receiving through all the ages. To date, in spite of many careful studies, one has been able to de one has no one has been able to detect any effect from these low level of radiation, and it is unlikely that studies of literally millions of cases would show any such effects. Unquote. First, we challenge the AEC to produce a single careful study on this issue. Furthermore, at first reading, the unsuspecting public will again understand this statement to mean that low doses of radiation will produce no effect upon humans. Did Tom Dr. Tompkins really want to say that? 
Why did he make the statement at all? Quote, no effect observed, unquote. First, the AEC can retreat upon challenge to a position that all, that all that was meant was that no effect observed, unquote. AEC is not claiming, quote, no effect occurs, unquote. No effect occurs. Huh? The public would have every right to be outraged by this shallow defense of an indefensible statement. But the no effect observed statement is not unique to any one spokesman of the AEC. Governmental and industrial atomic energy hucksters seem to adore this statement. Suppose there were a thousand persons in an auditorium and suddenly the lights were extinguished. During the period of the ensuing darkness in the auditorium, suppose a man is stabbed to death. When the lights go on again, it is perfectly appropriate in Dr. Thompson's framework to equate that no murder was observed, i.e. no event observed. Yet there, are, there is a result for certain in the form of a murdered man. What does this analogy teach us? Simply that if we do not look, or if it is too dark to see, then no event can be observed, no matter how disastrous result, no matter what disastrous result has occurred. We have every right to be shocked that such dubious, non-reasoning pronouncements are typical of the nuclear electricity promoters. Indeed, such pronouncements are so characteristic of them that the sheer repetition of such nonsense probably leads even them to believe that they make sense. What one really must ask the soothsayers of nuclear energy, who appear to have no understanding of public health principles, is, have you ever looked properly, or were the lights on when you looked? Their, answer, their answers, we fear, will be meaningless or non-existent. Hmm. They may point out to us, for example, that people have received ionizing radiation from medical x-rays or at their work, and no effect has been observed. What these so-called atomic authorities mean is that exposure to 5 rads, for example, people don't seem to die immediately. This has absolutely nothing to do with whether deadly effects are occurring. For what worries us, and should worry every American concerning the ill-conceived burgeoning nuclear electricity energy is totally different. We don't expect all exposed persons will die immediately or next week. It is cancer or leukemia five or ten years later, and genetic diseases in many future generations of humans that concern us. Major human tragedy can be occurring, and yet with eyes closed, no effect is observed. Over and over again, the public is treated with no effect observed pronouncements by the AEC officials, such as Commissioner Thompson and Commissioner Larson, when it is quite clear that no meaningful study was ever made. No such studies exist. Now, that was 1970, and it's still the same. I pulled down a scientific study for my science class. I was dumbfounded. In 2013, a group of six scientists in Spain got together and did a study, and guess what they found? The NRC has barely tested for any of these diseases or any of these problems. They have not done the work they said they've done. Back to the book. I'm sorry to digress. On the other hand, Dr. Alice Stewart, Lancet, June 6, 1970, has produced solid evidence that 250 to 350 millirads delivered to embryos, one x-ray film during gestation produces about a 25% increase in the subsequent occurrence of childhood cancers and leukemias. X-rays. Faced with such evidence, we wonder very seriously whether AEC commissioners should really continue to make the deceptive, irresponsible statements concerning no effect observed. We have pointed out the treacherous nature of the statement no effect observed used by atomic energy proponents to justify allowing population exposure to radiation. 
Were this an isolated example, now past, we could realize this and forget it. But what about tomorrow? We must ask ourselves, would it be possible for a major public health calamity to occur due to a byproduct poison and go unappreciated until it is too late? The answer is, it could readily occur if officials continue their application of no effect observed. The reason is that few of these officials appreciate what a major public health calamity is. Many persons think the poison's in a one-to-one -one sense. They expect a very high proportion, one out of two or three, uh, one out of two or two, one out of ten to show a serious effect. Beyond this, the expectation is that the effect will occur soon, hours, days, or weeks after the exposure to the poison. If we apply such expectations to potential environmental injury, the human species would surely be doomed. Disastrous effects can occur and be far more subtle than this. How disastrous? The combined toll of misery and death due to all forms of cancer plus leukemia would certainly be regarded by every American as a major human tragedy. We know this is true, for Americans consider a reduction in the burden of suffering from these diseases as a major priority goal of generously supported cancer research. Right, we're supporting research while we're supporting the cause. Moreover, research is generously supported for, for the much more limited and modest goal of an added six months to a few years of life for the victims of cancer or leukemia. In the United States, some 320,000 people die annually from all forms of cancer plus leukemia combined. The numbers appear large. But with 200 million persons in the U.S., the fatal toll of cancer is one person annually out of every 600. And that has probably grown exponentially. I don't know the number, but I can guarantee you it's exponentially worse. It may come as a surprise that, the ma made that a major human disease, cancer, strikes only one of a, out of 600 a year. Intuitively, one expects a major killer to strike many more persons per year. The same type of thinking makes it easy to think to overlook the introduction of a major killing disease of cancer's magnitude by a cavalier approach to environmental questions. Such a disaster can be introduced easily and unobtrusively because of two fundamental errors in public health thinking. A, we, need to we tend to look for an immediate effect of poisons, and B, we forget what careful study, that careful studies are required to show one out of 600 die per year of disease. And this is the kind of erroneous public health thinking that encourages the spacious statements by the techn technology promoters that no effect has been observed. I'm going to stop here, you guys. We're at the bottom of page 113. Man, this is some heavy material and so right. Wow. That's why they put that statement at the bottom of every single NRC. No public health has been observed. No danger to the public health has been observed because they haven't observed it. Just like they didn't go to fucking Chernobyl for five years. That's why they don't see cancer for five years. Rats. Well, let's hope that we can find some solutions or some plan. We There are plans to action in this, actually. So thanks for listening, you guys. And um, hopefully I'll be a little bit better about getting back regularly now that I'm kind of back to myself and life isn't uh, overwhelmed by just a million things. So ciao. Put your courage feet on. Bye.